our bitemporal hemianopia it's easy to understand uh, and easy to get confused as well if you just try to concentrate i'll try to simplify so that you can easily remember now bitemporal hemianopia look at this picture this shows the temporal field of left eye as well as that of the right eye is lost this is termed as bitemporal hemianopia why does this occur now we have seen in our glaucoma classes that the nasal fibers of the retina cause temporal vision and vice versa okay temporal visual field is controlled by the nasal fibers and the nasal visual field is controlled by the temporal fibers okay so by this statement you can understand that when both the temporal fields are damaged both the nasal uh, fibers must be damaged and where can this occur it can occur where these fibers cross that is at the optic chiasma okay is it easy to understand see this loss of vision on the outer half the temporal field is always temporal field is given by your nasal fibers okay and vice versa okay so both the nasal fibers should be damaged for you to have such a field loss it can occur where both of these cross over that is at the optic chiasma and the most common reason for this is a pituitary adenoma okay now the same thing let's look at a by nasal hemianopia opposite to by temporal we can understand that both the temporal fibers will get damaged now we know that these temporal fibers do not cross or do not come close to each other from both the sides so any lesion to cause a temporal fiber damage on both the sides is very rare okay so by nasal hemianopia see this nasal visual field is lost okay this is very rare now let's come to a little bit complicated condition called the right sided homonemous hemianopia now you have to concentrate on this word called homonemous what do i mean by this please look at this image over here homonemous means both of these can be superimposed on each other both these visual field losses okay this left eye visual field loss i can place on the right eye and it will look the same that is the meaning of homonymous or it corresponds to each other so uh, now in left eye the nasal field is lost okay nasal field this is the nasal field in right eye this is the temporal field so you can understand that in left eye the temporal fibers will be damaged similarly in the right eye the nasal fibers will be damaged okay are you clear with this the temporal fibers are damaged so there is no nasal field in the right eye there is a uh, nasal fibers are damaged so there is no temporal field okay you can see in this picture no nasal field no temporal field okay it is seen in left optic tract lesion that is the most common cause we know that the nasal fibers from the uh, from each side they cross over at the optic chiasma whereas the temporal fibers don't cross over and the optic tract contains ipsilateral temporal fibers plus contralateral nasal fibers okay that is why whenever there is a optic tract lesion it causes homonemous hemianopia on the opposite side so by rule any post chiasmal lesion will cause a lesion in the opposite sided homonemous hemianopia so what do i mean by right sided that the right side of the field of the patient's eye is lost okay not the right eye but if you if you're looking at the visual field report of the patient both the right hand side of your that is the doctor's right hand side is lost so in a left sided lesion the contralateral sided hemianopia is present okay by rule after chiasma all the post chiasmatic lesions cause contralateral visual field loss okay now let's just have revise what we have discussed 
See, we know that in normal condition, the nasal fibers, they cross over, whereas the temporal fibers, they pass without crossing. Now, when there is a postchiasmal lesion, that is in the optic tract when there is a lesion, the nasal fibers from the opposite eye and the temporal fibers from the same eye, they are damaged. So, the temporal field of the opposite eye and the nasal field of the same eye is lost. Okay, this is right-sided hemianopia. Now, another uh, interesting finding that occurs in an optic tract lesion is bow tie atrophy. Now, look at this bow tie over here. This is the bow tie we know. You can compare this shape that is the paler of the optic disc is in the form of a bow tie. See, it's so pale and I can draw the picture of a bow tie on that. Now, why does it occur? It is due to retrograde degeneration that is identified 4 to 6 weeks after the lesion occurs in the optic tract. Why? The pathology is the temporal and nasal disc fibers are damaged whereas the superior and inferior part of the disc is undamaged. See temporal and nasal are lost so there is atrophy in the form of a bow tie. So that is uh, another interesting feature about optic tract lesion. Now similar one left sided homonymous hemianopia now you can guess yeah yes that is right optic tract lesion when there is left sided homonymous anopia your answer will be right optic tract lesion. When there is a right sided homonymous hemianopia, your answer will be left optic tract lesion. See by rule, all post chiasmal lesions, you can blindly remember this, all post chiasmal lesions cause contralateral field loss. Okay? Okay? And pre chiasmal lesions cause ipsilateral. Okay, ipsilateral field loss. Okay, is it easy to understand? So, this is a story about uh, left homonymous hemianopia. We know that the right optic tract is damaged in this condition causing left sided homonymous hemianopia. Now, just a quick look at what happens in a pre chiasmatic lesion. We have seen that it causes ipsilateral visual field damage. There is complete loss of vision on the same side of the eye because both the uh, temporal and nasal fibers before they decussate at the uh, chiasma, they are damaged. That causes left monocular blindness when there is a left prechiasmatic lesion that is a same sided lesion. Okay? So, bilateral defects are due to contralateral chiasmatic or post chiasmatic lesions. Okay, we have discussed this also. Okay, let's proceed. Now, right homonymous superior quadrantanopia. Now, I know this is a huge term, but it is very easy to understand. We just look at the slide. Okay, the right homonymous superior quadrantanopia is also known as right pi in the sky. See, this is the field loss, and this is what the patient visual field looks like. He cannot see a pi in the sky. This pi, we call this a field as a pi because it's like a quarter. That is one fourth of the entire visual field. Okay. So, the inferior fibers are damaged. So, the superior field is lost. It's easy to understand, right? Just like nasal and temporal. The inferior fibers are damaged. So, the superior uh, pi in sky uh, visual field type is present. The inferior fibers, they pass through the temporal lobe. And when the left temporal lobe is damaged, there is a right sided pi in the sky, just similar to our left and right homonymous hemianopias. However, it is inferior fibers on the left side, inferior because the lesion is superior. Okay? All pi in the sky lesions are seen in contralateral temporal lobe lesions. By rule, all the pi in the sky lesions are seen in contralateral temporal lobe lesions. Okay? Then similarly, a right homonymous inferior quadrantonopia that will be pi on the floor. You see this lower part of the field is lost. So we can understand that this occurs due to superior fiber damage. Okay. Now let's look at our last type of visual field lesion that is macular sparing lesion. See, 
if the center we know that it represents the macula this is paired the visual field of macula is normal the rest of the field is lost that is the central 5 to 10 degrees of the visual field is spared it is seen in right occipital lobe lesion but why is the macula spared because the region of the occipital lobe which represents the macula has a dual blood supply that is by posterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery usually the posterior cerebral artery is damaged whereas the middle cerebral artery is spared also the macula is represented by a large area in the occipital lobe so there is an increased chance of sparing of macula so you need extensive lesions to damage the macular visual field you understand because of the dual blood supply and a large region representing the macula in the occipital lobe usually there is sparing of macula that is central 5 to 10 degrees of the visual field okay now just let's summarize with a quick revision the optic disc or optic nerve lesions cause same sided monocular blindness the chiasmal lesions we have seen bitemporal hemianopia optic tract lesion that is very common causes contralateral homonymous hemianopia along with contralateral bow tie optic atrophy now, lateral geniculate body keyhole field defect or sector anopia okay then the optic radiation there are two types of radiations so the mayer's loop is present in the temporal lobe and Baum's loop is present in the parietal lobe. Okay, M is for Mayer's and temporal has M in it. That is how you can remember. Then the other one left out is Baum's loop present in the parietal lobe, and we know these two cause pie in the sky lesion. Okay, and the occipital lobe lesion we have seen it is a macular sparing.